Joining such prehistoric celebrities as Utsi the Iceman and Juanita the Ice Maiden, the Gebeline Man and his companion, Gebeline Woman, are frozen mementos of their time. Naturally preserved and mummified by the harsh conditions of their home environments, these early humans tell stories of life, death, and even foul play in ancient times. So, today we're unearthing the tale of the Gebeline Man, an ancient tattooed murder victim. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Channel. Then feel free to leave a comment and let us know what other historical events you would like to hear about next time. Okay, let's start digging. The story of the Gebeline Man begins with a murder. Cue dramatic gasps and ominous harpsichord music. Although the wound in the mummy's back has been visible since its 1896 discovery in the city of Luxor, newer technology has made it easier to study it in more detail. In 2012, researchers using visual imaging devices conducted a virtual autopsy on Gebeline Man. And we don't mean they logged on to Zoom. With CT scans and a series of high-resolution images created from X-rays, researchers discovered more intel than David Caruso and his CSI Miami team could ever dream of. To begin with, Gebeline Man was only between 18 and 21 when he was slain. The cut in his back, along with the damage on his rib and shoulder blade, pointed to him being felled by a single powerful blow to the shoulder and ribs. In other words, he was stabbed in the back by a rat. The attack would have also punctured a lung, which would have made it very hard for him to participate in the dramatic gasping earlier. But what sort of weapon caused the wound? It was probably a copper or silver dagger, at least 12 centimeters or 5 inches in length, as those weapons were common in Egypt. What did you expect? The candlestick or the lead pipe? The attack likely caught the man by surprise, and because the area where he was discovered was in peace at the time, his death was more than likely a murder most foul. In a final twist of fate, the British Museum actually allowed patrons to play Ancient Detective, offering what they called the Interactive Institute in late 2012, giving museum goers the chance to examine the virtual autopsy findings of the mummy themselves. We'll likely never know the exact circumstances of his death, which is okay. His attacker would be pretty difficult to prosecute today. But the Gebeline Man can tell us a great deal about the ancient world. Although the British Museum has several mummies from the region, Gebeline Man is essentially a household name when talking about well-preserved mummies. That is, as much of a household name as a well-preserved mummy can be. Joining the likes of Tutankhamun and Amenhotep, Gebeline Man has grabbed museum-goers' imaginations for over a century. And, just like King Tut, no one ever calls him by his real name. Except his nickname is, a uh, a little wonky. The mummy's official name, used by the museum itself, is Pre-Dynastic Mummy. Which may be a little more personal than Gebeline Man, but it isn't exactly going to sell as many albums as a name like Cher. But some museum-goers started calling the mummy Ginger, due to small tufts of red hair still visible on his scalp and the name, like those red tufts, stuck. And while the nickname might not be great, it does serve as a testament to how well the body was preserved. Equally well preserved was the ginger nickname itself. In 1987, when the Gebeline Man was temporarily taken out of display for restoration, a female mummy replaced it. And despite the new mummy having brown hair, the public insisted upon nicknaming her Gingerella. Wait. Wasn't that one of the Spice Girls? Gebeline Man came from a time in Egyptian history when researchers believed only women had tattoos. So imagine their surprise when it turned out this man was getting inked all over the place. Most researchers initially mistook the tattoos for mere smudges on dehydrated skin, like the mummy needed a bath, which most mummies probably do. But they couldn't yet take a closer look, as infrared technology at the time caused too much heat and you don't want to imagine what would happen to a mummy when it gets too hot. Fortunately, infrared technology improved. And thanks to digital imaging, researchers could now examine the tattoos without harming the mummy. And his tattoos were pretty interesting. Although barely visible under regular light, infrared technology helped researchers see the symbols and figural tattoos on the man's skin. According to British Museum Curator of Physical Anthropology, Daniel Antoine, Gabaline Man was the earliest known instance of humans tattooing recognizable figures on their body. So basically the ancient equivalent of the first sick cobra tat. They believed the Gabaline Man had a bull and a ram on his skin, representing strength and power. 
In particular, the bull also stood for virility in Egyptian society. Well, either that or he was just trying to rep his favorite energy drink. Antoine went on to reveal this might be indicative of a larger practice of tattooing. But current technologies are limited by common burial practices. Even CT scans, which can produce cross-sectional images of mummies, are only effective in examining possible body art if the mummy is unwrapped. So if you want to check and see whether or not your mummy is tatted up, you're going to have to take it out of the package first. Hey there, weird historians! Have you ever wanted to learn a new language, but feel like most tutoring apps ask for too big a commitment, or spend too much time teaching you things you're never going to use? That's where Speakly comes in. Speakly was created by researching thousands of language learners for six years, and using that information to build a unique method that teaches words and sentences based on their relevance in real-world situations. You're not going to get a bunch of lessons that won't help you make your way through a conversation. Everything is bare bones essential to help you start speaking the language much faster. By investing just 30 minutes a day, Speakly can help you get from totally clueless to holding conversations in just three to four months. You'll learn new vocabulary, practice with speaking and writing exercises, learn with listening comprehension exercises, and even enjoy music recommendations in your chosen language. Plus, it's the only language learning app that lets you choose how you want to study, whether it be a writing focus, multiple choice questions, or a combination of both. Speakly is available on the web, Android, and iOS. So click the link below and start learning a new language today. Try Speakly for seven days and get a 60% discount if you join the annual subscription. And now, back to the video. If high school history has taught us anything about Egypt, when we weren't busy napping or passing notes, it's how well known the country is for its mummification techniques. Do you like ancient Egypt? Check yes or no. The Gebelin mummies didn't go through that particular mummification process, however, which meant none of that grabbing out brains through the nose stuff that delighted and repulsed us as kids. Instead, they were products of their environment, unintentional creations preserved by harsh desert conditions. Simple burials and linen wrappings were all the ceremonies these mummies received. They were placed in shallow sand graves in the arid climate, causing dehydration and resulting in natural preservation. And this methodology of natural mummification, which was commonly used before the man-made version, may have factored into the ancient Egyptian belief of surviving after death, resulting in the tradition of leaving tools buried with the dead. As it turns out, getting mummified the fancy way isn't the only ticket to eternity. Thanks, nature. When we talk about ancient Egypt, it conjures images of pyramids, a vast empire, and Brendan Fraser wisecracking his way through some cursed tombs. But in the case of the Gebelin mummies, they actually came from a time before Egypt became a unified country. Experts believe they lived between 3351 and 3017 BCE, making them over 5,000 years old. In fact, these mummies are so old, we'll wait for you to say, how old are they? That Antoine concluded, Incredibly, at over 5,000 years of age, they push back the evidence for tattooing in Africa by a millennium. As the oldest known tattooed figural motifs, they add to our understanding of the range of potential uses of tattoos at the dawn of ancient Egyptian civilization, and expand our view of the practice of tattooing in prehistoric times. As it turns out, tattoos carry some pretty heavy weight in most cultures, not just in ancient Egypt. For example, New Zealand's Maori people have practiced facial tattooing for hundreds of years in a process called tamoko, which is considered sacred. For the Maori people, tattoos were a rite of passage that represented high status and a fulfilling amount of mana, or amassing a powerful universal energy. Then there are the Gauls, Celts, and the Thracians, all ancient civilizations that used tattoos as a symbol of pride. Ivanozzi, the Iceman, who was found in the Italian-Austrian Alps, previously held the record for the oldest body art. In Gebelin Man's case, researchers believe he received tattoos as a healing practice because they appear on some acupuncture pressure points. But Gebelin Man wasn't the only person in his grave who had tattoos. The Gebelin Woman has a line of mysterious S-shaped figures on her shoulder, including a staff tattoo on her upper arm. This S motif is somewhat common in pre-dynastic Egyptian ceramics, leading many researchers to theorize what they could mean in the context of tattoos. According to a 2018 study in the Journal of Archaeological Science, 
The two tattoos found on Gebeline Woman could be viewed as a group possibly emphasizing ceremonial or ritual activities undertaken by, or on behalf of, the bearer. And part of these ritual activities could have involved magical or cult knowledge. Whatever the case, these tattoos served an essential cultural purpose, but that exact cultural purpose remains a mystery to this day. Speaking of mysteries, archaeology is full of surprises. Just look at how many Indiana Jones movies they keep making. And tattoos are often the source of those surprises. Gebeline Man was no exception. For a long time, researchers and historians believed tattoos in ancient Egypt were exclusively reserved for concubines and dancers. But when Dr. René Friedman, a researcher at the British Museum, weighed in on the issue, the perception changed. Friedman suggested that older wise women were tattooed, and the tattoos showed their initiation into cult practices and knowledge of medicine. It wasn't just meant for the gratification of men. What makes Gebeline Man and his tattoos stand out is, well, he's male. He was also young, which throws out the theory that body art was reserved for older women. So Gebeline Man punched holes in our textbook understanding of ancient Egyptian tattoos. And apparently, Dr. Friedman's hypothesis. Looking at the funeral details of ancient cultures can help us understand those cultures in a better light. And let's just say the ancient Egyptians left nothing to chance regarding their afterlife. To ensure the dead reached the afterlife, ancient Egyptians included items they thought might help with the process, including stone tools or jars of food, sort of the ancient Egyptian equivalent of bringing a Swiss Army knife or a cliff bar. Researchers found similar items in Gebeline Man's grave, but they weren't his. Although they were the same types of things he would have used at the time, the goods found in his grave were concluded by original discoverer Sir Wallace Budge to have likely belonged to his companions buried in a similar manner nearby. Huh, guess they ran out of room in their graves. So what do you think? What other ancient humans would you like to hear about? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our Weird History.